Hi guys, it's Nancy and we have a new release for um, Simon Hurley Create and Spellbinders. And this is called the Beautiful Blooms Stamp and Die Bundle. And we have these beautiful florals. I love how elegant and classic these look. Very nostalgic, but um, again, I've said this about Simon's artwork. It's really um, kind of evolved with him, and I really love this. And I love that this comes with a lot of little critters. So it's not just the florals, but you have this beautiful dragonfly, ladybug, a couple of like butterfly moths, a little bee down here, another set of little butterflies or moths and a couple of different floral images in here. The sentiments again are kind of timeless but have that timeless font as well. Hello friend, thinking of you, hugs, just to note you are beautiful, believe in yourself, I love you. And like flowers, friendship friendships bloom and grow more beautiful with time. So again, for those of you guys that are just starting and building your sets, this is a timeless classic set, and that's what I like about it. I don't really like sets that are kind of trendy right now and then disappear. I like a set that you can kind of invest in. And then in with Spellbinders, you're going to get the dies, which we're always asking for something that kind of matches up. So with this, you're going to get the dies. There's um, 24 um, stamps and you're going to get 16 dies. So basically dies for everything except the sentiments, but the sentiments are straight cut sentiments. So we're going to pick out some of these images. I have some of Simon Hurley's ink pads that are from Ranger. And then I have some of the Spellbinders, um, little blending brushes that I thought we could color them in. And then I grabbed the little black ink, which is the better press ink, which is basically the black archival ink. So I thought we would stamp the images out with that and then color them in. So I thought I would just do a couple of florals, a couple of the little critters, and then we'll cut them out and put them on note cards and make some pretty quick and easy cards. In here, in my little mini Misty, I have some of Simon Hurley stark white cardstock. This is the heavier 110 pound cardstock, which blends beautifully. So it will look beautiful when we go to blend the ink on it. Um, and I just cut some of that down. So let's pick a couple of images here. I am going to start with, I don't know what the names of all these florals are, so I'm not, not real familiar with all of them, but I do know that this is a lily because that is my favorite, so we'll start with that one. And I think I'll do a couple of these since we're going to cut them out. Try to um, take up as much of this paper as I can. I definitely like this little dragonfly and this little ladybug. And we'll start with those two flowers and two little critters. And my thought was, let me stamp these with the black better press ink again which is an archival ink and then we'll see how I can do the ink blending over top maybe I should have went with a gray ink but we'll see how this looks and I'm using my misty because I know that this is probably going to take a couple of different passes, a couple different inkings and stamping, but we'll see. was not nearly generous enough with my ink. Let's try that again. Where's my little Chucky tool? All 
right, got to be a little faster once you put the ink down because it does dry pretty quickly. All right, so my little, my little critters are okay. I got to go a little faster with the flowers. We'll do one flower at a time. Well, maybe I need to re-ink. Answers the question, should you be using those to stamp with? I don't know. They're not too bad. See if actually using the archival ink pad is any different. Yeah, it's not that much different. It's just one's got more ink in it than the other one. That's just being lazy. See what happens when you shortcut Nance? <laughs> It's really not that much different. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to re-ink my ink pads. I'll be right back. Okay, so before somebody asks me, no, I did not use the same ink. I did notice that the archival ink is less thick than the better press ink. The better press ink is much thicker and um, more viscous in uh, its thickness and <laughs> um, ink quality. So you might need to have like a a scraper tool or plastic spoon to press that ink in just do a little bit at a time. But no, I did not use the same ink to re-ink them. I used better press ink to re-ink the better press ink pad. And I used archival ink to re-ink the archival ink pad. Oh, I can already see the difference. I knew my archival needed to be re-inked, which is really why I grabbed this guy. I didn't realize that this was also dry, so. Now let's see what the difference is. Now that we have fresh ink in both ink pads, I'm gonna take my magnet out. All right, getting a much better impression. Let's get this flower re-inked. I think we're okay with the other one. Maybe a little bit more in the center, but this guy really needs to be re-inked. cannot get a good impression with that one. That's okay, that's okay, that's okay. This one, let's go back to this. Yeah, I just can't get it to give me a good impression in the center there. Might have to do the CPR method. There we go. All right, now that we're done playing with all of the ink. All right, I'm gonna take the heat tool off camera and warm that up just to make sure that all of that ink is set. All right, so now that that's done, there's a couple ways we can add color. We can easily take the ink pads and then just use the blending brushes and some of the large area. I'm gonna use a little uh, blending pen. You can use a Tombow blending pen or whatever you have. This is a Stampin' Up! one, but there are many different companies that make blending pens. Um, this is a Versa marker. Any of these will work. Um, where is my? But um, there are many companies that make them that you can 
you can use to blend with. So um, we're just gonna add some colors here. So I'm gonna take some Breakup Blue. And I like to just add some color directly to the marker. Or you can also scribble it onto your glass mat. And go right into your image. This, this one I'm going right into my uh, dragonfly. This cardstock is pretty heavy duty, so it will it will um, take quite a bit of coloring. You can add color pencil markers, whatever you want to add to it. Now on this dragonfly, I also want to add just a touch of green. So I'm going to add a little bit of later gator to it, just on the bottom of my wings. Okay, while I have that green out, I'm going to add some to my um, leaves and stems. have a little bit lighter green here which is overzealous. I'm using the same marker, same colors, I mean same tip. If you want to change that color out you just scribble on the back until it runs clear. If you want more color, you just dip back into the ink pad. If you want less color, just color off the page until it runs out. This is great if you're starting to work on your spring blooms. I know we are all thinking about spring. a little bit of fake plant here which is a little bit of a darker green I can go in and add a little bit of darker shading a little bit of shadow in here okay Got some with the green going to take that and scribble that off. Even though my tip is stained, all of that color will come right off. Okay, and then it's just a matter of coloring in my flowers. So for my lily, I'm going to do a little bit of shooting star. Again, these images, because they're so timeless, because florals can be used anytime, all right? We can use them in the spring. We can use them in the summer. We can use them for Mother's Day. We can use them for Easter. We can use them for birthdays. Sympathy, thinking of you if somebody is not well. We can use them for, um, you know, really any occasion. We have graduation coming up. We have, you know, any occasion florals are good for. They can be masculine, they can be feminine, anything. So this is a really good set to invest in 
and they're really easy. You can leave them and stamp them and not have to color them, but if you're somebody that just enjoys coloring or you're working on your coloring, because the artist has already done all the hard part with leaving, this is Slippery When Wet, which is a little bit more of a darker yellow. The artist has already put the shadows in here. That's why I like these kinds of sets because that art is already drawn in there. So you don't have to do anything but add color. The highlights, the shadows are already in there. So you don't have to be very good at coloring. All you have to do is follow the direction that the artist has already done. So wherever it's color, you add color. Wherever it's darker, like I'm doing right here, is I'm taking a little bit of a darker color and just coloring right over that shadow. By adding color over that shadow, it makes it look like I added that shadow. All I'm doing is adding a darker color right over that shadow. I don't have to be a good artist. I just have to follow the directions that they've already mapped out for me. So now it looks like I'm a good colorist when really I'm just following the directions they've left for me by just using two colors, a light yellow and a darker yellow, right? So now my lily looks like, hey, wow. And you could do pinks, you can do yellows. I mean, lilies come in so many different colors, orange, red, yellow, pink. And there's even like a dark purple, right? So same thing with this other flower. This other flower could be a mum. It could be um, a Gerber daisy. It could be, I think I'm gonna color it like a purple, what is that, a, a hibiscus flower. So we'll use some breakup blue and still using the same marker. Again, just using a light color. And you can do this with color pencils. You can do this with markers. You can do this with crayons. Whatever you have, just make sure you're using the right ink when you stamp it. If you're going to do water-based markers, you want to use um, a permanent archival ink. If you are going to use an alcohol-based marker, then you want to use a water-based ink. So that's the secret is to make sure whatever you're going to use as your color medium, you want to use the opposite type of ink. So alcohol markers like um, Copic markers or Spectrum Noir alcohol markers, then you want to use your water-based inks. And because I'm using water-based inks or water-based markers, I used an archival ink so that you don't smear your inks, okay? But all I'm doing is I'm doing a base coat of color here. My lightest color is what I always use for my base coat and just making sure I kind of fill all of that in. And all the shadows are already there. I don't have to do anything special here. And then I'm gonna grab my Crown Me, which is like a darker purple, and I'm just gonna follow wherever the artist has drawn those shadows. And I'm just gonna add a little purple here and there. And that's all I'm gonna do. And it's gonna look like I colored all of that and I didn't do that. Somebody else already drew all of this fantastic artwork and I'm gonna cut it out, make some blended background scent, throw some sentiments on there, cut, cut these beautiful um, little critters out. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this break up blue to my dragonfly because he kind of lost a little bit of his blue here when he dried back. And remember, these colors tend to dry, black, dry back so they lighten when they dry. So when they dry, if you need to add a little more color, they layer. They're translucent. They layer. So you can add a little bit more color. But what a beautiful note card set this would make if you just want to make a set of, you know, half a dozen cards to give to a friend who maybe isn't feeling well or isn't a card maker or just a gift to give to somebody or make a half a dozen for yourself and just have them ready to go. I always say, you know, have some, keep them in the glove box of your card. Maybe not have the sentiments on there, but just have them ready to go where you can just hand write a little note, have an envelope ready to go. And just, hey, I ran into so-and-so and found out somebody passed away or somebody isn't feeling well or it's so-and-so's birthday. And you have these ready to go. How easy is it to write a quick little note and, and, and pass these to somebody, right? And they're going to be like, oh, it was so thoughtful to see you. Now, my purple is a little bright here, but that's okay. I'm just adding little dashes of purple here. And you see, I went right over that area where it was a little too dark. And using this little blending pen, blended that out. Just 
just any area where it's dark. I'm just adding some of that purple. That's it. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little purple to my dragonfly. I feel like he needs some purple. I know my friend Tracy would agree. Now he's purple, blue, and green. Now he looks like he sparkles. Maybe we'll add a little sparkle to his wings. Okay, that's how easy that is, you guys. All right, now we're going to cut those out, but I need to do a little bit to my card base. So I have two card bases ready to go here. And real simple, I just want to do some real simple, like light ink blending on the backs here. So I'm going to take some of this breakup blue. And I'm just going to grab a really light blue blending brush. Actually, I'm going to grab one of my domed foam blenders. This is what Simon always does. Tap that off a little bit and just real light in the center and just kind of grab that color and pull it out. Just to give it a little bit of a halo of a color behind where my image is going to be. Doesn't have to be a lot of a color, just a little bit of a color. And it can be any color you want. That's my watch, sorry. Got a new watch and it makes this weird like game show noise. And again, a little bit. You've won Nancy's card making video. <laughs> we just tap that little bit off on the glass so that we don't have this harsh mark on our card as we're blending it out. And I'm telling you, makes it so easy with these domed foam blenders. <sighs> See, got that little bit of a halo. I think I need a little bit more on this one. One of my favorite techniques that I learned from my buddy Simon. You guys did not know many, 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 many years ago, probably about three or four years ago, Simon and I did a foiling video together. I will never forget that. Leah, my daughter, she's such a fan of Simon's. I mean, we are all fans of Simon's, but she like had such a huge crush on Simon. All right, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to die cut these out with the coordinating guys and I'll be right back. All right, so now I have everything cut out and kind of laid out the way I want it. And you can see how pretty they look with that little shadow of a background. And they're real simple, but, you know, they make a statement. And now I can just add the sentiments. You know, hello, friend, thinking of you. Just a note, you are beautiful. Believe in yourself. I love you. I think um, for both of these, I'm just going to keep them as kind of like, hey, how are you? Kind of hello, friend. I think, mm, I think I'm going to do just hello, friend, on both of them. And I'm going to stamp them before I glue them down. That way, if I mess up, I will find a way to cover up my sentiments. So I'm going to use my archival ink using my Simon Hurley block. And I think for this one, I'll just stamp this one in the corner. Actually, we'll do both of them in the corner. Ah, perfect. Easy. Very easy to clean up. If you um, need to clean these up, you leave that ink on there a while. Archival cleaner is very easy to use. Um, if you clean it up right away, you don't really need that. Okay. And then we're just going to use a little bit of glue. You could pop these up with foam tape as well. And 
And again, you could add as many flowers as you want and make a beautiful bouquet. I'm doing these pretty simple. And again, I think it would be very easy to make, you know, a half a dozen or a dozen cards and give these away as a gift. Um, I used to make a whole bunch of these for my daughter's grandmother and give them to her in the holidays. Um, I'd make a dozen at a time and put them in a little clear box and give them to her. And she loved it. She would be like, oh, I'm getting my cards for the year. And she had them to give, you know, for the for the rest of the year. She had Chris or birthday cards, thank you cards, thinking of you cards, whatever she needed. This little ladybug, I think I'm going to put... didn't really color that in but that's okay and then I think I'm gonna add an extra butterfly I will stamp and color an extra butterfly and put that on here to fill this one in but there you go so beautiful set of stamps and of course with spell binders you know you're gonna get high quality dies to go with it and this is called the beautiful blooms stamps and matching dies over at spellbinders a combo set with Spellbinders and Simon Hurley Create. If you have any questions, post them down below. Let me know, do you think this is a versatile set that you think you would be interested in? I will have the links down below if you are interested in shopping. It is an affiliate link for Spellbinders. Um, and if you had fun watching me make these two cards, please give me a thumbs up before you go. Here is the close-up of them for you. But I think it's pretty simple. Again, I love the timeless classic look of these florals. I love watching Simon as he grows and evolves with his um, styles. And keep an eye out because there is a Simon Hurley release. And there are some new stamps and some new lunar paste. So I will also have a video with that for you as well. So make sure you are subscribed to my channel. Thanks for watching, guys. And keep on stamping. Bye-bye.